Okay, here we go. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and in this video I'm going to take apart, clean and change the thermal paste on this PlayStation 4 Pro God of War Edition, model CUH7116B. This video is intended for general information only. If not done properly, you can injure yourself or damage your PlayStation 4 console. If you are not sure what you are doing, I advise you to ask for help or take your console to a professional. Follow this guide at your own risk. For this process, I will use the following. A thick guitar pick, a PH0 bit and a Torx T8 or T9 bit, window cleaner and some microfiber towels, brushes, different sizes, toothpicks, cotton swabs, cotton discs and some alcohol, some thermal paste and that's about it. I'm using a thick guitar pick to remove the hard drive cover. I remove this screw using the PH0 bit and after that I use the screwdriver as a lever to take out the hard drive. Next I remove the warranty seal to reveal another screw. For this one I will use a special T8 security bit that has a hole in the middle. You can also break the pin with a small flat screwdriver and a hammer and use a normal Torx bit. I removed this sticker but there was no screw underneath on this model. Different models might have a second screw. Now I am removing the bottom plate by pulling on the corners and then along the back side of the panel. It is the first time this console is taken apart, so I have to pull pretty hard on the corners. I slide the plate towards the front of the console and the plate comes off. Compared to my PlayStation 4 Slim, this console has little to no dust inside. Nonetheless, I remove the dust with a paintbrush and then I use a window cleaning solution and some microfiber towels to clean it. Inside the console, there is also very little dust as well. These two screws are important because they hold the power supply on the other side, so they must be removed first. To reveal the power supply I turn the console around and remove the top cover by pulling up from the front side this time and sliding it towards the back of the console. Now I remove the four screws that hold the power supply. There is a fake plastic insert that looks like a screw, don't bother with it. There are two long screws and two short ones. I found it useful for the assembly process to keep the four screws and the two screws from the other side next to the power supply. This way I will not mix them with the other ones. Next I remove the metallic plate and the power supply using the guitar pick and by pulling it upwards. This is the model for the power supply in case you need a replacement. I unplug the power supply from the motherboard and inspect it. There was some dust inside which I easily removed by blowing air from each side. Next I proceed with unplugging all the connectors, ribbons and antennas from the motherboard. Don't forget to release the tab on the larger ribbon by pulling it upwards. I want to change the thermal paste as well. This means I will be removing all the screws from this panel. There are only two types of screws here and there is no need to keep track of them because it is easy to know their place when you'll put the console back together. 
The Torx screws are bigger and they are meant for plastic and the PH0 screws are smaller and they will go in the metallic threads. Also there are small arrows engraved on the plates indicating that there needs to be a screw in that specific hole. The only thing I did to keep track of them was to put them separately from the other screws, like I did with the six screws from the power supply. I removed the metallic shield and clean it with a wet towel. Now I remove the pressure plate by gradually unscrewing those two screws. There are two plates here, I also keep them grouped alongside with the two screws to keep track. There are eight chips here with thermal pads placed on them. The thermal pads are not stuck there and they might come off, so be sure not to lose them. The thermal pads are there for dissipating the heat. Losing any of those might result in an overheating problem with your console. I almost lost two of them while handling the motherboard, as you will see in the assembly process, so I can't stress enough on this. Removing the motherboard and turning it around will reveal the processor and the heatsink. I will clean the old thermal paste from both components in order to change the thermal paste. First I use some toothpicks to remove most of the old hardened paste and then I use q-tips and cotton discs dipped in alcohol to wipe everything clean. And this is how it all looks. Before I install the new thermal paste, I still have to reach the fan and the radiator to clean them as well. And so I have to remove those two screws and take out the second metallic shield. I will place those screws grouped with the fan once I take it out to keep track. I use the wet towel on the plate. Even though it looks clean, there is some dust inside the radiator, so I'm blowing air into it and intermittently I'm using a paintbrush to remove as much dust as I can. Those are the last two screws, I unscrew them and I can finally take the fan out. This is the fan model number. As I explained earlier, here you can see the arrow engraving that indicates where a screw should be placed on this plate. If you don't see the triangle shaped arrow, you should not install any screw there. And this rule applies to all the plates and all the PlayStation consoles I have taken apart so far. Now I clean the remaining case the same as all the other parts. The fan was slightly dusty, but because of the way it is built, I had to use different brushes in order to reach all the spaces to give it a good clean. Once I'm done with the fan, I will start the assembly process. And since I received lots of comments from you guys on my PlayStation 4 Slim cleaning tutorial encountering some issues with the assembly process, on this tutorial I decided to guide you through the whole assembly process as well. And I encourage you to go through this process with me to make sure you don't miss any steps. Making tutorials is not easy. It takes hours of research, planning, filming and editing for each video, all with the goal of helping you understand and master new skills. 
If you appreciate the effort I'm putting into making these tutorials and find them valuable, I invite you to consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Your support allows me to dedicate more time and resources to improving the quality of my tutorials and expanding the range of topics I cover, furthering my mission to help others. I put the fan in place and installed the two screws back. Now I am placing back the metallic shield with the radiator and I make sure none of the ribbons and cables are stuck underneath. Now I install the two screws to fix the plate and I check that those six thermal pads are in place. I use the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste because this is what I had laying around. It is a good thermal paste, but you can also go for the newer NTH2 or with the Arctic MX series, as they all have great properties. This processor is slightly bigger, so I chose to go with a two dots method, which had good coverage by looking at the test I did. I turned it around and carefully placed the motherboard in its place, making sure the processor is placed right on a heat sink. Otherwise, the thermal paste might not spread evenly. As I said earlier, I almost lost two of the thermal pads, so be sure that all of your thermal pads are in place. I clean them a little with a bit of alcohol. Now I install the two metallic plates with the corresponding screws. I'm screwing both at the same time by turning a few threads on one screw and then a few threads on the other and so on. I'm screwing both at the same time. <laughs> this is a good practice for this step. Now I plug in the fan and all the ribbons. There should be six ribbons, including the big one with the locking tab that you have to push down on to be properly installed. Check the eight thermal pads again and place the metallic shield in its place. Start installing the screws, but not before you make sure the three antenna wires are not stuck between the plates. Remember the small screws go into the metallic threads and the big torque screws go into the plastic holes. If you have any doubts, look for the triangle arrow engravings that indicate there should be a screw there. Also remember that after this step, you will have two marked holes without screws. We will install those two screws after installing the power supply. Next, I am installing the three antenna wires. I turn the console around, plug the power supply in and pass the wire through the space designed for it. I carefully put the power supply in place and install the two small screws. Then the metallic plate and then the two long screws. I turn the console once more and install the remaining two screws. Now the hard drive and its dedicated screw. With the covers, I installed them the same way they were removed, only in reverse.
Now the warranty screw. The hard drive cover. And the top cover and you are all set. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and whether you choose to become a Patreon or simply enjoy watching my videos, I want to express my gratitude to each and every one of you. Thank you for watching.